Good morning. I'm Mike Murphy, and I'm customer CTO for the Americas region of Nokia. I'd like to first start by thanking Meredith for the opportunity to speak to you today. What I'd like to do is look at where we are in 5G and what's coming next. So let's get started. So we've had some great successes to date with the launch of commercial service across all carriers last year, some world first with DSS and SA, ORAN solutions coming shortly, and C-band. And if you don't mind, I'd like to spend a little bit of time on the availability of C-band. So even though the auctions are at the end of this year, the first 100 megahertz tranche really only becomes available in December of 2021, meaning service in 2022, and the next 180 megahertz in December 23, meaning service in 2024. The timing amount of spectrum is really important in this case, as I'll try to show to you a little bit later. From a bigger picture perspective, we see that 5G will start to dominate in about 2024, at least in terms of the number of devices deployed. And while the focus now is on mobility, it will shift to verticals somewhere around 2023. That doesn't mean that nothing happens between now and 2023. It just means that in terms of large scale impact, more complex solutions, we see them coming a few years later. And while it may seem like a long ways away, work has already started on 6G. In fact, Nokia is a founding member of the recently announced NextG Alliance, looking to ensure US leadership in that important standard. Now, there's a lot of discussion and debate about who's leading in 5G. Is it the US? Is it China? Is it Korea? Japan? Somebody else? I think what I can show definitively is that the US is leading in terms of technology. The left side of this chart shows world first by the US, and there's more to come. But not only in technology, I think the US is leading in terms of regulatory support, thanks to the FCC. Whether it be the tremendous amount of millimeter wave spectrum made available, unique solutions like CBRS, which will support 5G as well, of course, citing reforms to speed up the availability of permits and the cost of sites, supply chain security, and the Open RAN Policy Coalition. By the way, we could almost say that Nokia wrote the book on ORAN in the sense that we chaired the most important specification coming out of the ORAN Alliance and were the first major vendor in the Open RAN Policy Coalition. I'll have a little more to say on that later. Now, what I'm trying to demonstrate in this chart is the importance of the timing and the amount of mid-band spectrum that the industry needs in the US. This is a study we've been doing for a few years now, and it looks at a major metropolitan area in the US. The histograms here show the capability or the amount of capacity in the network for, to provide to subscribers. The line through the histograms show the demand of subscribers in terms of petabytes. And previously, what we used to see is that we'd run out of gas or hit LT exhaust somewhere around 2021 in this particular example. Now with COVID, demand has dropped a little bit. So that date has shifted by perhaps a year or so. So we see problems starting to come somewhere around 2022 or 2023, meaning that demand exceeds the ability of network to supply that demand. And that depends on headroom, by the way, how much headroom a particular carrier will build out in advance. The only way to solve this problem is with new spectrum and with 5G. And while millimeter wave is a great solution for this, it's also one that can only be applied in relatively narrow ge geographies. So we really need mid-band spectrum. And this gives you an idea of timing. We start that need somewhere around 2022, 2023 and going forward. It also gives you a bit of idea 
of the amount of spectrum required, because as you can see, the histograms, uh, uh, the demand flow uh, is increasing unabatedly. And so you actually need quite a large amount of spectrum to service that demand. So while the 280 megahertz over the next four years is great, we still need more and ideally we still need it earlier. Now, 5G in itself is quite disruptive, but what I like to say is that we're really at a time of a perfect storm in the sense of a confluence of multiple technology shifts all happening at the same time. Those are open solutions, in particular open RAN solutions, complete virtualization of the network, the emergence of web scales and telecom networks, starting with back office systems, moving towards mobile edge computing, and even towards network functions for the tel telecom network itself, and supply chain security concerns. All of these are all happening at the same time. Nokia, by the way, supports all of them. However, we also believe it's prudent to look at their application at the right place and the right time. For example, deploying ORAN solutions in Times Square this year for New Year's Eve may not be a good idea. It's not really at the maturity level needed for a situation like that, but it will be over time. So we just need to look at each of these technology shifts and apply them appropriately and prudently. Now, going forward, we all believe that the true promise of 5G is in new use cases, in particular in vertical industries. We can get an inkling of some of the timing and the focus of those by looking at the bodies that are providing input into 3GPP. Three of the biggest ones are GUTMA for drones, 5GAA for the automotive industry, and 5GACIA for an industrial solutions. Each of these bodies provides their requirements into 3GPP for changes to the standards that they need for their particular use cases for their vertical industries. That started at release 17. Unfortunately, release 17 is delayed by about six months. So this is where I got my timing for that original chart saying a big focus on verticals will come perhaps around 2023. Now we can garner a few other interesting points from looking at these industries or these alliances. So the first is the memberships. As you can see, these are percent of memberships. The US doesn't really dominate any of them. Now, I fully understand that just membership numbers doesn't completely define the contributions made by members, but it is one indication. So in short, it would be good to have greater US membership and a little more dominance, at least in one or two of these. The other thing we can garner from them is which are the ones that have perhaps more interest and maybe will come first in terms of verti vertical industry applications. At least I find it interesting that 5G ACIA had the greatest growth since last year in terms of members, perhaps implying that industrial applications will be the ones that get the most attention going forward, or at least the first uh, in terms of 5G as applied to vertical industries. So where does that leave us? We've had a great start in 5G. There's been a lot of world firsts in the US. We have great regulatory support, but there's still more to be done. We need more mid-band and we need it earlier just to solve the capacity problems that we know about, let alone the ones we don't know about. We also need support or greater attention to US contributions into vertical industries feeding into 3GPP, perhaps even regulatory support there. So that's the end of my presentation. Thank you very much for your attention.